if I asked you, hey, how's it going? And you would answer, oh, it's busy right now, but it'll be better once the kids are out of school. Or you say, oh, it's a crazy season right now, kind of running around with, like a chicken with my head cut off. Or you'd say, oh, I'm just running and gunning. If you'd say any of those common responses, then this video is for you. Here's what I'm worried about, your running and gunning pace, is that you can run and then run out. You can overwhelm your schedule, but be left with an underwhelmed soul. Busy seasons are normal, but busy is not meant to be a state that we live in, and overwhelm is not meant to be a mode of operation. It's common for us to feel overwhelmed at some particular time for sometimes external circumstances, or there are seasons of push, right? But they must be followed by seasons of rest. There should be a rhythm of grace and rest that we live in, even as hustlers. So in the last few videos, we talked about the priority quadrants, the four quadrants where we talked about importance and urgency. That helped us to take a look at our to-do list and see if we are labeling everything as important and giving ourselves and our time to everything, leaving us with a crazy overwhelmed to-do list. But then some of you struggled with identifying, well, what's actually important then? And everything seems urgent. So then we talked about core values, about the things that really matter and not just core values, but ideal values. Where do I want to grow and go? Because what we do should be an extension of who we are, what's placed in us and what God wants to work in us and through us and what we are valuing. So then we were left with the question of, gosh, I've identified some things that are important. Maybe I've committed to some things that are urgent for other people, but they shouldn't be for myself. And so then we started to think though, what if I just don't have the time? I have many important things on my plate. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. I wanna to talk to you about resource banks. I wanna to talk to you about leaks. And I want to talk to you about tweaks. When my littlest son was three, He's the fourth of four boys. He loved to live outside. And if I let him, he'd stay out there and he'd be naked while he was at it. Um, he would open and close the, the sliding glass door all summer long and I'd hear him go in and out. Our backyard was fenced, so I let him have the freedom, as every mom of four would, <laughs> to go outside as he pleased. And I'd find him out there doing all kinds of things. I'd find him landscaping the yard like the landscaper across the street. He would find an, an, a uniform, even at three years old, to mimic what he saw, and he would go and landscape our yard, which would, you know, sometimes tear apart my flowers and other things. He would also be out there mimicking his dog. So if the dog goes to the bathroom outside, then he absolutely should. Now, let's just be honest, like peeing outside is just a thing, right? Especially when you have four boys. But he was also doing the other in my backyard. We weren't in the forest at this time. Um, so I've caught him doing that, pants down, doing the whole thing. I found him with sticks and rocks, beating up fences, hitting furniture, whacking at my plants, everything turning into a sword and a weapon and him, you know, reenacting some kind of exciting scene. Something that he really loved in the summer was playing with water and playing with the hose. And maybe I shouldn't have let him. I learned with my first son that it was always good to manage their freedoms according to their responsibility. But when it's your fourth, you kind of rush that freedom a little bit just because you just don't have the wherewithal to manage everybody's freedoms and run a business and do other things. So I gave him the freedom. Sure, play with the hose. But there were many times that I would catch him leaving the hose on, right? Because a three-year-old isn't going to be thinking about what would be the ramification of leaving a hose on? Well, the ramification for us is flooding an egress window. And we absolutely had that happen. In fact, there was one time he turned it on, put it in the egress window, left it running because he wanted to build a pool. So that time he intentionally left it on, but he left it on, wanted to build a pool and it completely flooded our basement. And we had to tear out drywall and carpet and redo the whole thing. Why did I tell you this story? because it's unintentional leaks. Him leaving the hose on, letting it drip over time and the damage that that can cause. 
Let me put in perspective something that you could probably relate to. How many times have you walked into a bathroom or your kitchen and you hear the drip, drip, drip from the faucet? I have a few, let's see, what do I, have? I have three bathrooms, right? I don't know how many bathrooms you have, but that could give me the opportunity for several sinks, plus my kitchen, several showers or bathtubs where leaking, drip, drip, dripping can occur. I got nerdy one day and I was looking up, if it dripped one drop per second, what does that mean in terms of water loss? So one drop per second would mean about one gallon every four and a half hours. So in a day's time, it's about five gallons a day. If you did that every, and that's one sink, if you did that for an entire year, every day for a year, that's over 2,000 gallons of water. Now let's say that that's happening in multiple sinks, showers, and tubs. It could be upwards of 10,000 gallons of water. <sighs> Look at this tank. So, I tell you this to give you a visual picture of what happens when we leak our resource banks. The resource bank that you're familiar with is time. There are things that we will leak our time to without shutting it off and intentionally thinking about where that time is going. But we also link from our other banks, our energy banks, our physical energy, our emotional energy, and even our spiritual energy. And then our mental focus and attention bank. And then of course there is the financial bank, right? Every commitment and everything that we put our time to is also going to use some of those other banks and we don't even consider those things. And so we allow those things to drain without a replenishment plan. We don't plan our replenishment of those resource banks like we plan and strategize our business or uh, the path toward our goals or our summer plan for our kids. So today I want to talk to you about your unintentional leaks and then I want to talk to you about making tweaks considering those resource banks. So let's figure out maybe some of those places that you've got some leaking happening by bringing up some examples from my own life. Do you go to the grocery store and buy things off of your list? That could be an unintentional leak of time and money. Do you catch yourself scrolling through TikTok videos or Instagram reels and 30 minutes later you're like, oh my gosh, I got on here to message back so-and-so and here I am scrolling. Unintentional leak of time. But also can I say that social media can be an un unintentional leak of emotion, emotional energy, and maybe even focus and attention. I don't know about you, but social media can get my mind thinking on things that I should not be thinking on. Like going, oh man, I should be doing that like her, right? And then you get into the I should game and then you should all over yourself. Or maybe there is something that scrolls past and you go, oh man, I, I would love to experience that and I haven't gotten to. And so you feel like you have less and you are less and you do less. Or maybe on a friend level, you feel left out and that drains you emotionally. I know I'm not the only one that has found themselves in that type of a predicament by scrolling through social media. That can be a huge leak, not just with time, but from those other banks as well. What about thinking about things, maybe by a comment or a conversation for far too long? Fixing our thoughts and our focus and our attention on something we can't control. That can be an unintentional leak of mental capacity, right? What about unintentional leaks of worry? Where you're sitting there fretting about the what ifs or what's gonna happen if, and you're making plans for something that hasn't even really happened, right? It's the, it's the expected or anticipated result that you don't even, that's like one of a thousand different scenarios that could happen. So you're spending time and emotional energy, maybe even spiritual energy towards something that hasn't even happened yet. Those can all be unintentional leaks of time, mental capacity, and energy, maybe even money. Okay, so maybe none of those are your problem or are your problem, but hustlers, here's something that I think might be your problem. What about spending time on an urgent, non-important task because somebody else 
gave you the fire to handle. Maybe it's even your child calls from the school, mom, I forgot, dot, dot, dot at home. So you drop everything, grab the thing and go to the school using time for a non-important, non-urgent thing because it was urgent for your child. That could happen also in business. Somebody comes in, opens your door. They have something that they want to talk about now. And so you give your time and attention to this problem that was not on your important list. It was only urgent for someone else. I'm guessing that that's happened to you. Or how about this? Staying up late to work on something and stealing your sleep which is robbing you of physical energy for the next day. It's like you're borrowing the next day's energy that you were supposed to be recouping today. You relate? So here's how we make the change. You can't do everything that you want to do. And you're like, I know. Like you just can't eat that whole cake. I mean, you could, but you probably wouldn't feel good if you did. And you can't slap somebody in the face. You could, and it might feel good if you did, but it'd have big consequences after, right? You can't do everything you wanna do, even the good things to do. You can't come to the rescue for your child every single time. You can't be the problem solver every single time somebody needs your help. You can't commit to that thing that you really want to do, but is not in the cards for you to do right now based on what you've identified as your values, and the things that you're putting your time and investing your time, not just spending your time toward in this season. So this is a habit that you and I have to create. It's not a one-time thing where we identify what we should put our time to and our emotional energy to and our spiritual energy. It's a habit that we get into when we have opportunities, when we are asked to commit, when we are faced with interruption. This is a habit we have to get into to evaluate to look at our budgets, not just our financial budgets, but our time budgets. I know some of you are guilty in the time budget. You see a white space in your calendar and think that you're free. Girl, you need margin. You need windows of time between one thing to another. That's a whole nother conversation of task switching and multitasking and the decrease of productivity and ability that you go into the next thing with by not giving yourself a decompressed time. You need more space just because it's white doesn't mean you should fill it because you have to evaluate what you are committing to by looking at all of your banks, not just time. We're going to talk about those resource banks. We're going to talk about how to evaluate those because I'm guessing that you could probably identify right now one leak that you are going to stop because you know it's draining either your time, your physical energy, your mental capacity and focus, your attention, your emotional energy, or your spiritual energy. I gave, I gave you plenty of my own examples, but maybe you have an example yourself and you know that there's one thing that you can work on shutting down that leak, leak so it doesn't create a flood, doesn't create a bigger problem. It doesn't steal from the things that you want to give yourself to. Because here's the deal, every faucet on, Every yes is saying no to something else, right? Because you're limited. You and I are limited on time, limited on money. We're limited on mental capacity and focus. We're limited on emotional energy, spiritual energy, and physical energy. We're limited. So you give it away and it's gone until you replenish it. So let's make our yeses be really intentional. So there's probably something you could shut off right now that would help give more of yourself to something else, the best of yourself. To something else rather than what's left of yourself. Okay, but now about the tweaking. How do you determine when you've got an opportunity or a commitment that's presented or somebody needs something or you're looking at responsibilities or you're looking at things and making plans for the future? How do you determine whether you have capacity to do it if we're not just looking at the time? This is where we are looking at resource banks. The resource banks, you have your time bank. Everybody seems to be fairly aware of that one. You've got your financial bank. We're also aware of that one. And most of you are probably budgeting both personally and for your business. Okay, but there are also mental capacity, attention and focus. That's in one bank. 
And then you have your energy banks, which can be broken down to physical energy, emotional energy, and spiritual energy. Every single one of those banks should be considered when we are making a commitment, when we are creating plans, when we are strategizing, when we are filling our calendar. So if you have not recently tracked your time, what are you spending your time on? This is enlightening, honestly, because I think sometimes we can feel so busy. We're working so hard, but there's so many leaks happening and you're switching from one thing to another to another that the productivity is actually low. So you are in action, but it's like a hamster on a wheel because you are draining your energy while you're running from all these other things. So I challenge you to find an app. There's free apps that can help you to track your time and then categorize your time. Categorize it with, was this a planned activity? Was this uh, an interruption? Was this something that came up last minute? Was this an important activity? Was this important and urgent? Was this work related? Was this personal life related? Was this uh, a commitment that is filling my banks, like getting a workout in? Was this spending time with my family, which also fills your banks and are aligned with your core values? Keep track in a time log. Do it for a week. Make sure to include a weekend. Even better would be to do it for a month. And look at where your time is going. If you feel like you are busy as a state, not just a season, this is your challenge. Find your leaks and look at your time log because I'm guessing that there is a resource waiting for you that you feel like you are out of, but you actually have more of. It's just going to the wrong things. You're saying yes to things, which isn't leaving room for any more yeses. And those leaks and faucets need to be turned off. Okay, secondly, with the focus and attention, what are the things that capture your mind when you have a spare moment. So when you're not in work mode, when you have a spare moment, you're going to get something to eat, you're taking a break, and your mind goes. Where is your mind going? Is it just going to the very next thing all the time? You're always thinking productivity? I wanna challenge you to think about what you're thinking about. Acknowledge what you're thinking about. Another question side by side with that is what is your most negative thought? because oftentimes those can run rampant in our head. And those are the things that will steal the most of our focus and our attention. And then it taps into our energy banks too. So take a little inventory of your mental capacity, focus and attention. And let me just say, if you are constantly thinking productivity, you are running a dangerous tightrope of potentially tying your identity with what you do. I have been there. You have to disconnect from what you do. That's why God talks about a Sabbath, not because he needs it, but because we need it. Okay, the next thing is your energy, your spiritual, physical, and emotional energy. Most people are aware of their physical energy going down. Some are not. Some are not in tune to what their body actually needs. And they think they're okay with living on three, four hours of sleep, five hours of sleep. But if you find that there are some other signs, like you're getting sick, your immune system is low, or your hormones are wacky and your menstrual cycle is out of place, or you've got some mysterious symptoms um, that the doctor can't really figure out what's going on, it could be your high octane, high adrenaline life is burning you out and you don't even realize it because you're not tapped into your physical energy and understanding what actually you need to replenish it. It's not just sleep. Exercise actually replenishes physical energy. So maybe your mindset has been, I don't have the time to exercise because I'm so busy. I would say you're so busy, so you need to exercise so that you have the energy to do what you've committed to. It's just a mindset thing. Okay, what about your physical, or sorry, your spiritual energy and your emotional energy? So every commitment, like I said, is going to use some of these. We're going to talk about this in the next video about some tasks take emotional energy from us and, and sometimes in a negative way, sometimes in a good way. I am like in the middle of introvert and extrovert. So when I spend time with people, I love it. I love people, but I do feel drained. I hate that about me. Sometimes there's been things, there's been times that I have felt like, gosh, I feel like I could help more people, I'd have more friends, all of those things if it didn't drain me. 
but I've learned to accept that over time and I've learned to pat it so that when I want to show up for the people in my life, I make sure that before those and after those events, I'm prepared. I've filled my bank so that I can show up with the best of me, not what's left of me. And also, if I'm doing back-to-back -back people, I know my capacities. I know how much of that I can do and then when that runs out. And I know at the end of my day, I will be physically exhausted if I've drained my emotional bank. I know that about myself. So we're gonna talk in the next video about how to time block your time according to the things that utilize your energy in different ways. Something to think about. Start taking notice of that and inventory of the tasks and commitments that use the most of your energy. Okay, so I've talked about the banks, I've talked about ways for you to do inventory, and I've talked to you about leaks. You've got some leaks to address and some tweaks to make. Ultimately, our goal with this is to move out of a busy as a state, to move out of overwhelm as a mode of operation so that you don't have an overwhelmed schedule and an underwhelmed soul. My goal is to help you show up in all the places and spaces and with the people you love, giving the best of you, not what's left of you.